Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So this video is going to be a little bit different in that I'm not going to be building any model kits in this one. As you can already see here, what I've got is this 3D printed model of a ship. Not just any ship, this is HMS Thunderchild, as described by Drak Indefell in his video about the ship. So for a bit of context, this ship is a the most accurate representation of the HMS Chandrasar described in the book of uh, O.G. Wells. And what I'm going to do is try and recreate this famous scene from the book using this ship described by Drakenefell. If you don't know who Drakenefell is, he is the go-to guy on naval history on YouTube. I'm sure you've probably heard of him. But he did a tremendous effort in trying to find uh, information from the book and from historical archives trying to represent trying to find a good representation of what the thunder child w might have looked like uh, due to what sort of ships the british were building and having in their navy at the time so what i thought i'd do is just have the ship printed and painted and added in a little diorama and as you can see here it turned out pretty great it was a very very nice 3d uh, printed model. I have no idea of the scale of this one by the way, but uh, I think it was a very very nice little kit, uh, sorry model, once I had it commissioned. After that I decided to add on some PE parts that I had laying around from another kit, I believe it was from the USS Hornet, that I didn't complete. So I used those parts and added some fittings. So once the ship was almost done, it was time to think like a Martian. And if you've read the book of H.D. Wells, or you've seen them, any of the movies or film series, you'd know that the Martians are tripods. So what I did was that I got some sprues out of an, uh, some old model kits. I usually collect some of my sprues and save them for later projects like this. Then I used this Tamiya barrel, which is going to be the main structure of the Martian. And then just set about rummaging around in my uh, workshop and trying to find if we can find the parts that make it look like a Martian. Uh, the Martians I just used out of this drawing, I used this as an inspiration and just added all sort of bits and pieces together and came up with this thing and as you can see it, well it looks like at least something out of this world and it has three legs, there are these wire thingies hanging down and these parts, these are actually axles from a submarine it's the propeller shaft of a 1.350 scale uh, submarine from somewhere and then they're just some brass wires that I got from I can't even remember anymore when I painted this I just did it as plain and simple as I could just different shades of grey and then added some uh, weathering on top of that but I had to prime it obviously as you can see here because otherwise the paint won't stick to these different sort of surfaces. Now with all of that taken care of I moved on to the base of the diorama and I thought I was just going to make a very simple and easy diorama just a picture out at sea but there are still a couple of things you have to take care of. First of all I got this block of styrofoam which I just roughened up a little bit with a blunt knife then added on a tremendous amount of glue on it which I just spread out kind of evenly with a little piece of aluminum foil. Then the rest clue is that you get a lot of small pieces of aluminum foil like this and you just uh, crunch them up and uh, put them together in a sort of, uh, well, not a very systematic way. Uh, you can see here that there are some tendencies of waves going in a sort of uh, northeasterly direction, northwesterly direction, I'm sorry. And that was just pure coincidence, more or less. I didn't actually plan this. I just make this as random as I can. After these have set for a little bit, you add another layer of glue. Not as much this time. But then you get a brand new sheet of aluminum foil, like I do here. And just push that gently into the cracks and crannies so that it, it uh, sticks pretty well to the rest of the aluminum foil. Wood glue... I found is the ideal glue for this because one, it's very cheap, and you two, you can <laughs> use a lot of it on this uh, a project like this, and also it doesn't harm uh, either the uh, styrofoam, which usually melts if you use other types of glue, and it's very easy to work with. You have a lot of time working with wood glue; it takes forever to set, and that's 
uh, uh, very good to work with in a project like this. So as you can see here, it's more or less done and it looks like a surface already and here I'm just test fitting the things to see how they fit. And uh, yeah, so far so good. The next thing is a third layer of wood glue just to have uh, take out the worst holes in the uh, aluminum foil because those will inevitably appear and you take out some of the shine it's easy to paint and you get a hard surface that won't tear when you work with it later on so i let this sit for overnight and uh, then it's been hardened pretty good uh, you'll see in a moment that it's not completely set but it's more and more than good enough for what i'm going to do now so what I did was that I got a piece of paper and just cut it out roughly to the size of the hull of the Thunder Child. And then I'm using a scalpel here as you can see and, and just removing the layer of um, aluminum foil where the ship is going to be. I use this uh, rather blunt blade, well it's going to be blunt when you're done anyways. And uh, you can just very easily work with this. Aluminum foil is ridiculously thin after all. And it doesn't really matter that we've crumpled up a lot of it underneath. You just have to, uh, like I'm doing here, hold your finger in place so you won't tear it off uh, the layer that's uh, further down. Because since we have packed this rather nicely together and it's pretty airtight, you can see that still, after 12 hours, the wood glue hasn't properly set. And uh, that's not really an issue because we, <laughs> we're going to remove this, but it will set eventually. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to remove the styrofoam to put the ship in it. Very simply with an X-Acto knife. This takes some time because I don't want to damage the surrounding sea around it. Because uh, we want a, as a smooth transition from the hull of the ship and out the surface of the sea as possible. Once all of that is done, I just test fit the model over several times and remove uh, very small pieces again and again and again because I really don't want a huge gap between the model and the uh, the base of the diorama. I've had that several times over and I just ended up filling those in with glue and it doesn't really look properly good. But this thing, I think it looked really good actually and I wanted it to look like this, like the ship is rising out of the sea. You can see the bow there is lifted out the sea because then it looks like the ship's going faster and it looks like it's ready to ram, which is what it actually does in the book. So once that was done, I got into painting and I have a very specific type of paints I use. You can see them on the screen here if you'd like to pause the video and have a closer look at them. And I apply these three in three different layers. The paints I have found to work best, or the paints that I'm most happy with, uh, are all to me. Yeah? The first one is the Sea Blue XF17, uh, which I'm going to apply here, as you can see. I did apply two layers of this because I, I didn't really dilute it, which possibly I should have done. If I had an airbrush, of course, the result would have been much better. I keep going on about this airbrush in every single video I do. Maybe I should finally take the plunge and get one. But anyway, once those two layers are done, I go on to the next paint, which is the Tamiya X22. This is just a clear coat. It's completely see-through. I use this because it get, adds a little more depth to the diorama. And I have done some build where I haven't included the 22 clear. And I found that it looks a lot better with it. And with the final layer I add on is also a Tamiya and X. 23 clear blue. This is just a finishing touch and this make, really makes it pop like you can see here. I think the surface looks very realistic and it looks very very good. And these three are my go-to for making sea dioramas. Some of the final details to complete the scene are to paint the wave tops. I just want some thin white paint uh, which has been diluted quite heavily and then I wipe most of it us on the paper and you get a sort of a dry brushing on the top of the waves I just do some highlights on top of these ridges and things and it just adds a lot to the scene in my experience the devil definitely is in the details of these sort of builds because in this particular case there's not a lot going on so you have to be extra careful that's why I did the same thing around the legs of the Martian so that it looks like it's just standing there in the water this is not supposed to move around it's just standing there 
But the Thunder Child, that is moving at speed. So we have to have a little di different approach there. So what I do is that I have these amazing pads that my girlfriend uses. Don't know uh, if you're going to miss this one. But I'm just going to add these around the hull of the ship. So it look, it look like the sea foam and sea spray coming out of everywhere. And this really makes a difference, I think. It looks like the ship is moving and the sea is just being churned up all around it. So I just add a thin layer of glue all around the ship, and particular uh, at the rear and on the stern, because that's where the uh, propeller is going to be, of course. So you get a little more action back there. So the finishing touches here are to remove all the excess aluminum foil, because what's going to happen next is to add the uh, thin layers or, or thin sheet of balsa wood around the entire base. But sadly, my, my local hobby shop went out of business, so I haven't got uh, any balsa wood. So this, sadly, is going to be the surface uh, around the diorama as of now. I'm just going to paint this entire thing black, and then hopefully I'm going to get hold of some balsa wood later on. But that is it. It is fine time to reveal the rest of the diorama. So, I hope you like it. So that was it ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching the video. Please like if you like the video or consider subscribing, that would be great. I really hope I didn't put the Thunder Tire Child to shame here and I hope that if Drakenefell watched this video he will uh, like it as well. And if things go as planned there might be another Drakenefell surprise on this channel in the future. I don't know yet, I'm just going to tease you. Again thank you very much for watching. Uh, and uh, see you later.